I don't know what it is about Mike Myers. The man just keeps turning himself into memes. Ho 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 ho. Delightfully devilish, Seymour. <laughs> Yes, everybody, welcome back to Delightfully Devilish, the show where we discuss films that all at once meet the criteria of being the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm your host, Jukebox Harry, and today we are looking at a film adaptation of one of the most popular children's stories of all time, and a film that turned out to be perhaps one of the worst comedy movies of all time. The Cat in the Hat is a 2003 fantasy comedy film which cost a whopping $109 million to make. That is a ridiculous sum. It was also so critically panned that Dr. Seuss's widow actually declared she would not allow any further live-action adaptations of her husband's work. The only reason that Cat in the Hat came to be as it was was because of a lawsuit with Universal Studios, they actually sued Mike Myers because he tried to back out of a contract to make a film adaptation of his character Dieter from Sunday Night Live. He didn't want to give audiences a subpar script. To bury the lawsuit, he agreed to star in this film. He actually backed out of another film because he didn't like the script and made this one. The <laughs> that script was a $20 million contract. If you're like me, or hopefully any kid in the Western universe, you read Dr. Seuss as a kid, or had it read to you by teachers or loving family members. Dr. Seuss is just a marvelous writer for kids' stories. He always has wonderful world-building, delightful illustrations, and powerful moral messages at the end of his stories. And interestingly enough, another big part of my childhood was in fact Mike Myers. I loved the first two Shrek films growing up, as well as the fourth one, but even before that, I was a big fan of the Austin Powers trilogy. I watched them again and again so many times as a kid, and I hadn't even seen a James Bond film until I was actually 17. Even today, it still holds up as one of my favorite comedy film series of all time. I rewatched the entire trilogy in the lead up to this video and I love them all. I also rewatched both the Wayne's World films, which I enjoyed. I also tried So I Married an Axe Murderer, which was a bit mediocre, and The Love Guru, which uh, that, that just sucked. But regardless, I was optimistic that this film would entertain me in one way or another. The Cat in the Hat starts with a look at the city of Anvil, and it's immediately clear that this is where the large budget of the film has gone. Everything is designed with fine detail to retain the shapes and colors of Dr. Seuss's illustrations, and it's actually pretty remarkable to look at. The late Kelly Preston, rest in peace, plays a real estate agent named Joan, who works for the obsessively germophobic Mr. Humbleflube. Humbleflube, I wanted to thank you. Fired. I beg your pardon? Fired. But I... Fired! <laughs> wow, with uh, COVID impacting the world the way it is, that character is very relatable. Joan is hosting an office party tonight, and there's a lot at stake. If your house is as messy as last time... You're fired! I just want to pause on Humberfloop's face there. Like, that's the shit that nightmares are made of. Back at Joan's house, we meet her kids. Sally is the uptight daughter portrayed by Dakota Fanning, and Conrad is the little shit portrayed by Oscar nominee Abigail Breslin's less talented brother. Conrad tears his way through the house, making an active effort to be as destructive as possible. I thought this was strange as a kid, but as an adult, seeing this much mess just gave me a lot of anxiety. Ladies and gentlemen, Nevins, your attention please. You are about to witness the third most spectacular stunt ever performed under this roof. Do you know how hard it's getting to tell people that we're related? I bet she actually got that line from Abigail Breslin. He even stuffs the bread in his crotch for some reason. Whose idea was this? It was definitely not Dr. Seuss's. He rides down the stairs, knocks all of his mother's groceries, and even hits her car. And it causes the dog to run away. Hey, Mom. What's up? Hey, I've never hit a kid before. I tried to tell him, Mom. Mom's throwing a very important party, I said. All of her important clients will be here. Fucking Leia! Someone lose a dog? I started watching 30 Rock just before I rewatched this film, and my boy Josh pointed out to me that every single time Alec Baldwin plays a character, it's just another incarnation of Jack Donaghy, and he's fucking right. Thanks, Lawrence! It was my pleasure, Sally. Anything for my little princess? Oh, I don't want to be a princess. In a constitutional monarchy, Parliament has all the real power. I see. Okay, that's great. Fuck off, Lisa Simpson. Larry is dating Joan, and he's trying to convince her to send Conrad to military school. I'm not sure it's right for Conrad. Uh, he's meant to be the villain of the film, but Conrad is a very destructive, thoughtless, senseless little shit. You should send him to military school, at the very least. I know how hard it is, Joan. It is hard. Oh, I know. Wow, this got seedy very fast. <laughs> Oh, the phone. Kelly Preston actually does a really solid job at capturing a very cartoonish blonde character. I heard what you said. He's doing karate? I know I'm not your dad. Yeah, who is? Good question. I don't like you either. I don't like you either. Joan gets called back to the office, so she calls over Mrs. Quant to babysit and lays down the rules. And absolutely no one sets foot in the living room or else. Or else what? You're gonna do what Larry said and send me to military school? 
Maybe if you'd just behave, I wouldn't have to consider military school. I wish I could trust you. I wish I had a different mom. You could not have said that with less conviction. Well, sometimes I wish the same thing. You, you wish you had a different mom? Yeah, I first saw this film when I was seven years old, and even then I found something wrong with that line. If I'm seven years old and poking holes in your script, then you've got a problem. Would you like to watch television with me? We don't have to tell your mother. Isn't a television normally kept in the living room? I wouldn't use parliament. You tell them, Guai Zhang. No more big government. Right, because kids love Taiwanese politics and violence. Then something went bump. <laughs> Shouldn't scare people. You should have seen the look on your face. It was like you saw a monster. A monster? Where? <laughs> That could have gone better. <laughs> Rule one of the cat and hat drinking game. Drink every time he makes that sound. That was a giant cat. But that's impossible, isn't it? It's entirely impossible. Well, first of all, through God, all things are possible, so jot that down. Who are you? Who? Me? Why, I'm the cat in the hat. There's no doubt about that. I'm a super fundiferous feline who's here to make sure that you're... Me line, key line, turpentine. I got nothing. I'm not so good with the rhyming. Not really. No. Okay, that is just poor form right there. One of the cornerstones of Dr. Seuss's writing is his rhyming. It's one of the things that makes his story so captivating. If you can't be bothered writing rhymes into your script, then don't adapt Dr. Seuss, you dumb little shit. See, even I can do it. Where did you come from? <laughs> hmm. How do I put this? When a mommy cat and a daddy cat love each other very much, they decide that... Oh, no, 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 no. Th this is a kid's movie, right? <laughs> Drink. Uh, I'm enough. Who is this? <laughs> oh. That's my mom. Awkward. I could have sworn this was based on a children's book. Who is this dreadfully uncomfortable woman? Our babysitter. You pay this woman to sit on babies? That's disgusting! I remember when I thought the word babysitter was funny as a kid. I was five. That was two years before I saw this movie. i do it for nothing. <laughs> uh, just how are we meant to interpret that? Let's see what the old phenometer has to say. Phenometer? Yeah, it measures how fun you are. Just how much money went into that prop for this one gag? Just as I suspected, you guys are both out of whack. Mm -hmm. You're a control freak and you're a rule breaker. Stop this right now! Uh -huh. Who said that? Uh -huh. Me! Remember the fish? Oh yeah, he's meant to be a character. This cat should not be here. He should not be about. He should not be here when your mother is out. I remember when my grandma used to read the cat and the hat to me as a kid. She delivered that line with way more conviction than Sean Hayes does in this scene. Sean Hayes is fine as Mr. Humberflu, but as the fish, he's just fucking annoying. And the fish is meant to be the voice of reason in the story. And then we get a salsa number for some reason. He never used a litter box. He made a mess in the house. That's why they sent him to a vet to cut up both his bull. Rule two, drink every time the cat in the hat is not a kid's movie. And then he's a matador. Apparently a subplot of the cat in the hat is that the cat is a master of disguise. Given that Mike Myers co-starred with the master of disguise himself, Dana Carvey in the Wayne's World films, I wouldn't be too surprised if this was a thing. The cat makes the kids sign a contract saying that they can have all the fun they want and nothing bad will happen. As a child, this meant nothing to me, but as an adult, that giant contract was kind of frightening. Then suddenly he's a mechanic with a human ass. Sorry. Yep, drink. Amid the weird things that he finds in the couch are an elephant who he physically abuses. Great moral values for a kids film. Hit the elephants. Jump! He can't jump! <laughs> the kids start jumping on the couch with the cat until Larry comes in to steal party supplies and provide some product placement. But he's allergic to cat hair so he sneezes his way out. See kids, I told you, stick with me, it'll all work out. Classic tea ups. What do you want to do for fun? I want to make cupcakes. Cupcakes? Oh yeah! <laughs> Rule three, drink every time the cat says, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then we get the best scene in the film. Hi, welcome to Astounding Products. <laughs> the cat is literally watching himself right now. All the way from Cheshire, England, please welcome me, hello! He's watching himself play multiple characters. I'm so excited! I just can't hide it! Do you love making cupcakes but hate all the hard cupcake work? I know I do. <laughs> well, drink. 
This amazing device can instantly make cupcakes out of anything that you have in the kitchen. Wait a minute, did you say anything? Anything. Anything. Yes, anything. <laughs> anything. 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 I'll get you, and I'll look like a bloody accident. Drink. You can put in, I don't know, a carton of eggs. What? How about a pack of hot dogs? <laughs> Why not? Some ketchup. <laughs> yeah, why not? Out. I know what you're thinking. Even a fire extinguisher. There we go. Hmm? Now, Are those kids' faces there, that was me for the majority of this movie. Delicious cupcakes are just minutes away. Did you just say minutes away? That's impossible! You're not just wrong, you're stupid. That line has no place in a kids' movie, but the amount of times I've used that as a response in arguments is... It's actually beyond counting. I used it twice last week. Once when I was arguing with someone who thought that COVID was a 5G conspiracy, and once with someone who said that trans people were mentally ill. Fact. They are not. Now wait just a minute. And you're ugly, just like your mum. Drink. Did you just call my mother ugly? Shut up! I mean it. I will end you! <laughs> um, cat. Your tail. What about it? Oh, I see! I've chopped it off. Up, oh, drink. Son of a bitch! I swear, this movie will send me to Alcoholics Anonymous. Drink again! Cat, is the oven supposed to be making that sound? Of course, that means they're almost done, Conrac. Conrac. That's what I said, Condor. Cat! Now that's my name! You can tell that Mike Myers really wanted to call this kid Condom in this scene. Given the nature of the film's comedy, I'm kind of surprised he didn't actually do it. <laughs> Drink. Yeah, they're horrible. Who wants some? <laughs> come on, come on. And the cat gets tasked with cleaning it up. Look. I'm a girl. Okay, in an age where we're trying to make gender roles a thing in the past, this joke hasn't exactly aged too well. That's monstrous! A balloon? This filthy thing? She was gonna wear that tonight and you ruined it. Honey, it was ruined when she bought it. Yeah. I have to give Mike Myers credit for this. He is actually gayer than Sean Hayes in this movie. Sean Hayes, of course, played Jack McFarlane on Will and Grace. Hey, hey, hey. You're not that great, Mr. Sister. <laughs> all right? I do a better share than you. I told you all this would happen. But no one listens to a fish! That sounds like a pretty rational judgment call. Cat brings out thing one and thing two, and they're just terrifying to look at. Oh yeah! Drink. And during their introduction, Conrad gets distracted by the cat's crate, which serves as a trans-dimensional gateway between his world and ours. No opening the crate. No looky, no touchy. Got it? All right, things. I'm not paying you to stand around and look pretty. Maybe you should be, because those are two of the ugliest fucking things I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen Leonard Part 6. The things are meant to clean the house, but instead they literally just destroy the absolute shit out of it, and Conrad uses this as a chance to pick the lock on the cat's crate. This kid is the reason we have Planned Parenthood. This kid is a slightly older version of the Ice Age baby. I really just want to punch him in the teeth. Hey! Klondike! Do you have any idea what happened to the lock on this crate? It's on Nevins' collar. Nevins? Put the dog down! Why do they always do the opposite? It's so annoying! Remind you of anyone, Conrad? Zinga! <laughs> the cat's crate starts leaking a mysterious energy into the house, and they need the lock to shut it. We should call Mom and tell her what happened. Yeah, that would be a pretty responsible decision. <laughs> All right, Nevins. Oh. Time. <laughs> Alright, that one definitely got me laughing. Dirty hoe. Drink. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Come on, cat. Two drinks. Everyone I know is there. There's Jenny and Ellen. How come Denise didn't invite me to her birthday? You know what? Let's just watch some flashbacks. Well, what about Denise then? She talked back to me, so I ordered her not to speak to me anymore. And you don't like Bossy? I won't tolerate it. Zinga! Boy, I'm really good at this. And then the cat's a pinata, and one of the kids from Cheaper by the Dozen comes and sack taps him with a baseball bat. Except that earlier in the film, we saw that the cat has literally been spayed and neutered, so even if this hurts, it couldn't be as much as you think. <laughs> Admit it, you've definitely had that temptation with some kind of child before. Also, this kid is actually described on Wikipedia as being an intellectually and socially inferior preteen boy. I didn't get that from the film. Whoever wrote the Wikipedia page for this movie must really fucking hate that kid. Larry rocks up and claims the dog, planning on using it as leverage to get Conrad in trouble. Why don't we take my car? 
You have a car? Were you not listening earlier? How did you get here? I drove! There you go. The super luxurious omnidirectional whatchamajigger. S-L-O-W? Yeah, slow. It's better than the last name we had. Super hydraulic instantaneous transporter. Oh, you mean no! In the year 2003, Mike Myers was able to get away with sneaking the word shit into a kid's movie in one way or another. Drink. The cat tricks Larry. He chases them, they disappear into an underground nightclub, which doesn't seem to surprise Larry at all, and Paris Hilton's in there. Because you can't have a Dr. Seuss film without Paris Hilton, right? The thing steal Larry's car and come to help everyone race home, because kids love Grand Theft Auto. They get home and Larry busts in before falling into the cat's world. They enter into it and literally ride Mrs. Kwan down a purple water slide. Elder abuse! Elder abuse! I remember feeling that the film was really strange at this point as a kid. Obviously this was not in the source novel, but this scene turned the film surreal and weird, just for the sake of weird. It's on the ride at an amusement park! You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> and self-aware product placement, of course. They get to the crate and go to shut it, but the cat is inexplicably no help. Sally gets sucked into the gust. The house collapses in on itself, but it turns out that the cat saw this coming. I planned the whole day. <laughs> Drink. The house getting trashed? Uh, yep. Quinn taking Nevins? Uh, yep. Cutting off your tail? A uh, nope. You even knew I'd open the crate? Why do you think I made it my one room? I knew you couldn't resist. Helen Keller knew you were going to open the crate. Your entire character arc is that you can't follow simple rules. The kids cast the cat out, declaring that he doesn't know when enough is enough. They brace themselves to get in trouble, but then the cat comes back in, and they're smiling about it. Again, when I was seven, this was very strange to me. They angrily just cast the cat out of the house. He doesn't follow that one simple rule, it comes right back in, and already they're smiling about it. He fixes literally everything in the house using a highly sophisticated do-wacky. The moral of the original Dr. Seuss novel was that it's fine to have fun as long as you clean up at the end of the day. The moral of this film seems to be that it's fine to destroy literally everything because you can always put it back together. I could be overthinking that, but that's pretty much the entire purpose of this YouTube series. I overthink everything so that I can criticize them to compensate for the fact that I'm very insecure because I got a lot of criticisms about myself as a kid and never learned from it and grew up to end up making bad film reviews because I had nothing else to do with my life. Everything gets fixed, and the cat confirms that the kids are all right. Looks like everything's in balance, but you're still smoking way too many cigars, and you? <laughs> Lay off the sauce. Drink, and this time it's ironic because he's telling you not to. As a kid, I had no idea what the sauce was. I just thought he was telling the kid not to eat apple sauce for some reason. Never made sense to me. The cat leaves, Joan comes back to happily discover that the house is intact, and Larry busts in to spout a story that nobody believes. I do know what kind of kid Conrad is. He can be irresponsible. Yes. He makes bad choices. Yes. Sometimes he makes me want to tear my hair out. Yes. 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 But he's a good kid. He is most definitely not a good kid. It took an anthropomorphic talking cat with a Brooklyn accent to teach him a lesson about following simple rules. Larry gets cast away and Joan's party is a success. Honey, your cupcakes are a huge hit. Um, earlier the cat said that the cupcakes tasted terrible. Like, does he just not have good taste in food? Or do the writers just not think this through? How'd they get so small? As a kid, I literally thought he said, how did they get so small? And the credits roll, only 75 minutes into the film. But when you think about it, those kids are going to have nightmares about that experience for the rest of their life and possibly be declared legally insane. Is the cat in the hat a good film? I uh, know. How do you characterize a film like The Cat in the Hat? It's a complete disaster! Yeah, this movie is full of lines of dialogue that can be used as responses and memes because that's what this movie is. It's one big meme. Mike Myers took a kid's story and extended it to feature length by filling in all the gaps with a bunch of random non sequitur Saturday Night Live style comedy sketches which are clearly oriented towards an adult audience. If you take away the source material, this is literally the Master of Disguise all over again. Previously I talked about The Master of Disguise because it is a comedy film that's considered to be one of the worst movies of all time. It actually came out around the same time as Austin Powers in Goldmember. So while Mike Myers was off having huge success, his co-star was off ending his film career in The Master of Disguise. Mike Myers then went on to make The Cat in the Hat the very next year, so he most definitely cannot look down his nose at Dana Carvey. Oddly enough, there is actually a lot to compare about both these films. Both movies had the stars from Wayne's World turning themselves into anthropomorphic animals, and both movies were the first and only film to have ever been directed by a previously established production designer. And that would actually explain the lack of storytelling coherence, but the large amount of focus on production design and imagery. Both films were marketed towards kids, but featured copious amounts of adult-oriented humor, and both films really struggled to push their material to feature length. Both films are weird back-to-back -back comedy sketches waiting to be turned into memes. And both films really damage their star's reputation as leading men in Hollywood. And both films can really only be enjoyed on an ironic level. If you're surrounded by friends and maybe you've got some mind-altering substances with you, yeah, that's a way to enjoy this film. Objectively, there is nothing to write home about with The Cat in the Hat.
But honestly, I would love to see the Cat in the Hat as a double feature with the Master of Disguise because when you think about it, it kind of is a spiritual successor to that movie. Also, if you play these films back to back, they'd actually reach the feature length of a single movie. Subjectively, the Cat in the Hat is another hilarious testament to Mike Myers' ability to turn himself into memes. Objectively, this is one of the worst pieces of shit to ever call itself a comedy. It can't decide whether it's a kid's movie or not, and it reeks of desperation in trying to push itself to feature length. All the magic from Dr. Seuss's novel gets completely lost, and the moral message actually gets a bit distorted. The production design does a wonderful job of bringing Dr. Seuss's illustrations to life, but more often than not, they actually feel more creepy than wonderful. Mike Myers plays the cat simply as another Mike Myers character, instead of as the cat himself. Originally, this role was going to be played by Tim Allen, and I'm not sure what that would have been like, but I am very curious. When it comes to the kids, Spencer Breslin is one note and thoroughly unlikable the whole way through. I know you can't criticize child actors too much, but I genuinely hated Conrad as a character. Dakota Fanning was a bit better, but Sally is a pretentious character who's actually got less development than Conrad. She never learned to stop being a bossy sycophant. At least Conrad learned that there's a point where you need to stop and realize what you're actually doing. And apparently Mike Myers was not a pleasure to work with. A lot of directors have actually come out and said this. On the set of this movie, apparently he isolated himself so much that he didn't interact with any of the other cast members outside of filming. Also, he was said to overrule the director a lot by pulling out a lot of self-indulgent comedic improvisations, which are very hit and miss. And uh, since the director is a production designer and not a film director, that's pretty easy to see how he was able to get overruled. The best objective thing you can say about The Cat in the Hat is that it's the reason we have no more live-action adaptations of Dr. Seuss books. And given just how creepy and weird The Grinch turned out to be, yeah, I would say that's a good thing. The Cat in the Hat gets two things out of ten. It is half a very loose adaptation of our beloved children's novel, half an inappropriate collection of back-to-back -back Saturday Night Live sketches, which don't make any sense, and entirely one big misguided comedy, which at the least has found life as a meme and as an ironic piece of crap. And that does it for today's episode of Delightfully Devilish, you guys. If there are any movies you want to see me discuss on this show, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to see more episodes of this show, please hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, until next time, I have been your host, Chickbox Harry. Peace.